Ian Duncan Smith joins us now. You've taken part in PMQs as the leader. Yep. The first time you did it as leader, it was a pretty nerve wracking moment, isn't mm. it? It's the single most nerve wracking thing you'll ever do in your life. Very mm. few people have actually done it. And I said once, I said, What's it like? I said, It's like driving a car uh, down a narrow road at 100 miles an hour. Uh, whilst having to look in your rearview mirror to see what the hell is going on behind you <laughs> and if anybody's there trying to smash your car up from behind. I said it's just impossible. Everything's happening at literally micro time. So a uh, 10 second space in what you say. So if you leave a pregnant pause, mm. someone in that room is going to fill it and make you look like a fool and then you've got 15, 20 minutes to fill. Who, oh, right, sorry. Okay, who, oh, yeah. who, who prepares you for this? Who's going to be... Yeah. Uh, sitting there with Theresa May today saying, I mean, does she get some sort of pep talk, you know, some no, sort of no, psychology, or does she get lines from a scriptwriter? Well, the Prime Minister is always in the prime slot because they have the last word. Mm -hmm. The Leader of the Opposition, it's a nightmare job because you've got to figure out six questions and you've got to know where she's going to go or he's going to go as the Prime Minister on every single answer to every then single answer. So it's a more difficult problem. For the Prime Minister, she will have a full book of basic facts that she can turn to. You've seen the Prime Minister use that, uh, David Cameron. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what they'll try and do is they'll be sitting with her saying, right, okay, what are the issues that he's, you know, he is going to bring up? Now, with Corbyn, she's blessed because Jerry Corbyn never follows up a weak answer. Mm. You know, your job as leader of the opposition, if they make a stumble, is you go in again and you follow it up. But he never does because he just goes to his next line on the script mm. and talks about somebody from Oakshot or whatever. And it just, it's very easy for the prime minister. But her job is to make sure that she leaves with the last point at every single Is podium. the problem with Jeremy Corbyn, we talked to Owen Smith earlier about this, is the problem with him as a leader that he's not really, as many people conventionally see it in the Commons, a proper leader? He's not actually at the moment acting like an, an effective and efficient leader of the opposition. Yeah, the leader of the opposition's job um, is a difficult one, but their job is every week, fun, fun enough, in... The reason why uh, the Prime Minister's question is important for them, it's because they have to kind of lift their parliamentary party as they depart to go back to their constituencies. The Prime Minister's job is somewhat different mm -hmm. because they are Prime Minister, they have all that authority, their job is to show I'm in charge, I know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about and this lot couldn't run a brewery as was in that sketch. Mm -hmm. But for the opposition leader, failing to lift the spirits of your parliamentary party, he doesn't make any effort at all mm. to do that. Mm. So scoring points doesn't, yeah, it's okay. doesn't do anything. Um, are you disappointed at the moment? Theresa May didn't give you oh, a no. prime <laughs> job. She gave Boris Johnson the yeah. Foreign Secretary a job. She's got Andrea Leadsom in there yeah. as, um, as a Secretary of State. And poor no. Duncan Smith is now... No, not really. I left it. I mean, a small little caveat to that story is I actually did resign from the government back in March because I had a difference of agreement about direction of travel. Yeah, but a different leader, different Prime Minister. Yes, but I think it would look a bit odd to the public if after three and a half months of disagreement, mm -hmm. uh, you suddenly decide that actually it's all right again, you can come back into government. Well, there was so much disagreement in the run-up to the EU referendum. Everybody so was. was at loggerheads, and well, yet she seems to be able sense, to include people well, that are not For what you. it's worth, my sense about these things is there's too much kind of easy coming and going in politics. I, I took a, I hope, a principal decision. I disagreed with what was going on, and I resigned. I want to go back to heading up my Centre for Social Justice. I want to try and make the case for the Conservative Party to be much more centred around this area and very quickly you've worked opposite Owen Smith yes in on the same brief is he any good well he uh, I, I, I never got a sense of who he was in the whole time that we were there it seemed to that me that he like was thing. possible to be kind of almost anything I don't know but that's what politicians in opposition have to be to a degree but certainly I didn't get a sense of whether he was on the left or as it were a kind of Blairite mm. it, it seemed like he could hop between both of those quite at any time. Damning, damning words from IDS. Yeah so. except uh, can I just point out you would want Jeremy Corbyn to maintain his role as leader of the Labour Party because you think he's an ineffective opposition and therefore it shores up. Well, I'm a little bit bad. I came in with Andrew Eagle and I'm very fond of Andrew and I think she would have been very good in the role so oh. it's not just about Jeremy Corbyn I actually uh, think she well, would be very good. Well as always we appreciate you coming in you're yeah. a regular guest of ours yeah. uh, in direct <laughs> contrast to Mr Corbyn <laughs> who if he's still watching, and I'm sure you are, get in here. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. I think the country requires fresh leadership to take it in this direction. I will do everything I can as Prime Minister to steady the ship over the coming weeks and months, but I do not think it would be right for me to try to be the captain that steers our country to its 